Well, welcome to my channel, Mispronounced Adventures. My name's Alex, and welcome to not an Arctic Round 3 video. New personal record, minus 38. But just as important, this channel, my personal life, and my professional life are heavily based around travel, which is all planted. Where I work overseas leading expeditions and make travel content. Or electrical projects. And there's the top side of it. And building this van and making videos about it. Because of that, I do associated collaborations to help fund the free content I make, like the Arctic trip. Welcome to the Nordic Arctic Round 3. I like to make the channel pay for itself. This video is a collaboration with Bluetti and the Bluetti AC200L power station. Historically on this channel, I do a lot of things with power stations, and I use them. Some of the silly things I do is I turned it into an electric sound paddleboard just as a pirate got drunk and harassed people. Yar! And the last time I worked at Bluetti, I made some panniers, attached it to an e-bike, and went for a Scottish e-bike, e-camping overnight trip, which turned out to be a lot of fun. This is a bit of sun, I thought I'd quickly get the solar panels out. I just think this is brilliant. So, happy to work with them again. But, I also use power stations in my day to day, as you can see throughout the other series, and the, particularly the Arctic series, power stations do feature quite a lot for doing tasks around the van. Right, <laughs> I know full well this isn't going to start with the uh, exhaust blocks. From using a heat gun to melt a frozen exhaust to chucking one in the engine bay to power a heat gun. I find them quite versatile bits of quit. Need to do some of the heat shrinking for the electrics. And I've been lucky to use quite a few different models over the last few years. And it's currently minus 20 in the Arctic. But as I said, collaborations like this, working with power station companies, are key to this channel and how I fund it at the moment. The current series, which is Arctic Trip Runs 3, was completely paid for by YouTube related income before I left. And a vast majority of that was two power station videos. I do these videos, and I like playing with power stations, I like seeing what's new coming to the industry. And from a business point of view, it makes the channel work. But as you'll have seen historically with other videos, I don't unbox something brand new and say it's the best thing ever. This is the best thing ever because I haven't played with it. I look at the specs use case and how I might use it and how I work with it. Or when I can, I disassemble products, look at their build quality, internal components and how they're built. Not so much on power station videos. So I'll be honest, the Bluetti AC200L is not suited for me at all. It's huge. It's far too large for my use case and I've already got a substantial electrical system in the van, which I'm not gonna replace. Although outside of the van context, I do feel them quite helpful for when I'm building something and it's a pain to run long extension cords to run my power tools or charge batteries. Now, what I had planned to do is I wanted to film a video of this saying, can power stations replace your van's traditional electrical system? And that was my plan, but I ran into a small issue with that. This is the AC200L which seems to be a bit of a sequel to the AC200 Max, which was a very popular power station. And I do know a few channels and vans who did actually use them as their core electrical system, opposed to running a traditional one. So when the collaboration email came in for the AC200, I thought, great, I've got the new model. I can make the video I've been wanting to make for a while, which is can power stations replace a traditional system in the van? Because the AC200 Max, which this succeeds, had a very useful feature, which was a high output 12 volt DC port. Most power stations come with a 12 volt, 8 amp or 10 amp socket, which many people are used to, which isn't really enough to run a lot of things you would want to run in the van. Yes, some lights, but we're in the UK, people run diesel heaters a lot. I know I particularly do, my diesel heater's got over 5,000 run hours on it now. A diesel heater generally can't start off the vast majority of those 12 volt sockets as they are. You still really can't run a diesel heater off the 12 volt socket on most of the newer models of power station. Some it can. Normally I have to use an AC to DC power supply to run things like diesel heaters for when I was using a portable one in the Arctic this winter. Inside it's running off the power station and my little diesel jerry can down there. It's also not the most secure connection type either. But not often do they come with 12 volt, 30 amp output. And that's what made the AC200 Max special. As you could directly and securely wire a traditional 12 volt blade fuse box directly to the power station to control your van circuits. 
Unfortunately for me and my video plan, they decided to get rid of it so it no longer has a high amp 12 volt DC output and instead they've replaced it with a peculiar 48 volt 8 amp socket, which scuppered my video plans until I talked to Bluetti a bit more about that socket. And is actually quite interesting. But first, integrating it into a van is not the sole use of power stations. Many different people, there are many different use cases. So let's go over the specs of the new unit first, and then we'll come back to the 48 volt, eight amp socket and see why that can make integrating power stations into your van actually feasible. First off, this thing is not light. It mostly gets rid of the portable bit of portable power station. It weighs 28.3 kilos, but at least it's got some carry handles and a reasonably boxy design, so it's easy to put places. That being said, it's that weight because it's a pretty reasonable sized battery. It's 2048 watt hours. And whilst watt hours might not mean much to some people, for those who run 12 volt batteries in vans that are more used to amp hours on 12 volt systems, this is the equivalent of a 12 volt 158 amp hour battery and actually this advertises itself as a 40 amp hour battery because it's at 51.2 volts natively. Reasonably weighty because it's got a reasonable amount of lithium cells inside it. Speaking of the lithium cells, this uses LiPo4 chemistry which, depending on how you measure it, is around 3000 life cycles and your usual sort of operating conditions. Lithium shouldn't be charged below zero degrees and shouldn't be discharged below minus 20. And on top of that, the other heavy component is the inverter. So one of the core reasons power stations are interesting and what makes them different than just a battery is it's got everything built in. It's an electrical system all in one. And the inverter is one of the main features, the ability to have AC appliances running in an off-grid scenario, be that a van or be that out camping somewhere or anywhere else which is away from the grid. So this model is the European model, it's 230 volt. It's got a 2,400 watt output on its inverter and up to about 3,600 in its power set. There's a few other details about that, but you can find those statistics in a booklet or online. 2,400 watt is more than sufficient for most of your normal van life needs. That's running induction stove, air fryers, heat guns, coffee machines, and even AC units. Or if you wanted to integrate this into your van, you could plug your AC socket system onto a three pin plug into one of the sockets. Although if you are doing that, do consider using a consumer unit for safety. Hidden AC cables in a vehicle should be protected or directly plug appliances into it. Whilst it's great to be able to use high wattage AC items off grid, it's no good if you haven't got the capacity to run it or the recharging options to get that power back in. So whilst this is a 2000 plus watt hour battery, which Given the inverter maxed out, could give you an hour and a half to two hours running at absolute max. That's useless if you can't get power back in quickly enough to replenish it. So recharging and how you recharge it is a pretty important feature. First off, AC charging. Most of the new power stations don't need big power bricks anymore, which is great. Exactly the same as this. Like many of the power stations now, it uses the inverter working in reverse to have some high charge rates, which gives you access to fast AC charging. Normal fast charging for this is at 1200 watts, and the turbocharging, which can be activated from the app, is at 2,400 watts, which will go from zero to 80% on this in about an hour. Although fast charging like that isn't necessarily the best for long-term health of lithium batteries. When the AC is plugged in as well, it's also a UPS, which doesn't really have much of a use in the van context, but if you're running this in a domestic context for fridges or any other piece of sensitive electronics or critical load you may want, if you lost AC power from the coming in side, this inverter would take over and run that bit of equipment you wouldn't notice a power drop potentially. In a van context, if you want to install this, you might install it in a way where the AC coming in was to hook a point on your van with the consumer unit in the middle for safety reasons, and then plugged into this. When you put your van on hookup at a campsite or a driveway, it would then start charging this. And that AC is automatically passed through to the wall sockets. Next, solar. These often, when they originally came out, got called solar generators, a name I didn't particularly like. Really, they've got a built-in solar controller or an MPPT controller. This one can have quite a large solar array attached to it, ranging from 12 volt to 145 volt PV coming in and up to 15 amps for a total of 1200 watts of solar charging. And the solar charging and the AC charging can be done at the same time as well. That same plug can also be used for DC charging. If you had a 12 volt battery, you could plug it into the same solar slot and it would take power from that 12 volt battery to charge the power station. Solar charging in these, it can be your portable solar panels, or it could be the solar panels on your van if you wanted to rig it up that way. As I already said, stack power stations this size don't really work for me in my van format. So I usually leave larger power stations at my mum's house where she can run her air conditioner unit in the summer off it and it's plugged into the 800 watt solar shed I built her last year. 
so she gets free power to run an air conditioner and I get brownie points being a good son. That's the same area as the inputs for charging. There's also the expansion slot as well. So you can put extra Bluetti batteries on it to make the capacity of your Bluetti system even larger. But this brings up a good point. I don't understand particularly why Bluetti moved away from using reasonably common connection types to some very different ones, although it does come with some cables in the box. The AC plug on many power stations now, you're quite often used to seeing the three pinned approach. I've got a number of power stations that do that. And regarding solar panels, you usually see them with the yellow XT60 connector. Many different brands of power station use the XT60 connector. It's not necessarily standardized, it's just used a lot. Plenty have gone for some different styles of plugs, but they do give you an adapter. However, their adapter is to an XT90, which is a bit confusing, but it just means I needed to get another converter to get my solar work from an XT90 down to an XT60. And it doesn't necessarily make much sense to me why they chose the XC90 brooch because none of the maximum voltage or amperage coming from the DC solar side is higher than what a XT60 can handle on its specifications. So potentially an odd move there. Although they do provide a XT90 to MT4 connector, which is for most solar panels, which then goes into the XT90 to Bluetti's connection and then into the power station. The one thing I do know is with the way they have swapped their plugs from these, what are normally used, these are threaded fittings, so the plug is not going to come out, it's threaded onto the unit, which may be better for more permanent solutions. And given the size of this unit, a more permanent solution isn't necessarily a bad thing. DC-wise, it's got a bunch of the normal things you would expect. USB-A running QC3 and USB-C running PD3. Up to about 100 watts, which will charge all your normal things. And you can run it, and for modern laptops which use a USB-C connector, you can charge them as well. Over on your DC output side, you've got that 12 volt socket we've talked about before. But that brings me to the 48 volt 8 amp one and the question at the beginning, can you run your van or motorhome off a power station? Well, it really depends what you want. For me, no, I would not, I could not do what I do in my van with just a power station alone, nor would I want to. I like my system, build of individual components, but, but their market isn't necessarily aimed at me. I do think for the weekend warrior, someone who's using their van, overland vehicle, motorhome for a weekend, a couple days away, then yeah, put this, stick this in fully charged. You could cook on an induction stove, charge your phone, end of the weekend, you probably wouldn't have depleted it all go home, charge it, not a problem. The reason I don't see these being easily integrated is you can't easily get 12 volt DC out at a higher amp, which is one of the most important features. Yes, you can run lights, which would be easy, but most people in the UK especially want to run a diesel heater as soon as it's not summertime. I know I particularly do. So what does the 48 volt 8 amp socket do? Well, after some investigating and speaking to Bluetti, it's for the Bluetti D40 which is sort of a 400 watt DC to DC charger or written in the this unit's manual voltage regulator. And that's a reasonably interesting piece of equipment. It's not actually released yet, but it is announced. And Bluetti did send me the not finished or finalized version of that D40's manual, which I don't know if I'm allowed to share or not, but at least I can go over quite a few aspects of it. It's effectively a way for the AC200L and a few of the other Bluetti power stations to integrate into a vehicle. So the D40, seems to have the ability to have a 12 volt leisure system connected to it, your starter battery and solar as well. When you start your vehicle, it works like a normal DC to DC charger where it starts to charge your 12 volt leisure system off your starter or the alternator because the engine's running. And it can also accept solar as well, so it can bring in some solar and charge your 12 volt leisure system. Where does that come in? Well, the D40 can be standalone or it can be connected to this. That can then feed the 12 volt leisure system with power directly from the AC200L. The D40 also has a bit of a limited solar capacity. This has a far higher one. So you could also have your van's solar plugged into this and it was, your solar would also feed your 12 volt system. It sort of ended up being almost a hybrid of opposed to having a complete van running off your power station. You have a sort of a bare bones 12 volt system with no inverter and limited capacity, but enough to run lights, the diesel heater, which when you want to use the vehicle, you bring the Bluetti AC200 in, and doing that, you're bringing in a 2,400 watt inverter to run your AC appliances, electrical hookup, which if you plug it into your campsite, you can then charge the AC200 up, which will in turn charge the 12 volt system up, have a larger solar controller for your 12 volt system, and you're expanding the capacity in effect of your 12 volt system by 2000 plus watt hours. However, looking at the information available, the one drawback I do see is it doesn't seem that D40 works both ways. 
only power coming out of this can go into your 12 volt system. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem whilst the D40 itself can charge your 12 volt system off the vehicle's engine, it doesn't seem that once that 12 volt system's full, you can't feed energy back into this or not with the D40 by itself you would have to plug into something else to do it. Maybe not a perfect solution, but, but definitely something a bit different than others are doing. Although I do think for me, I'd personally like to see the 12 volt, 25 amp or 30 amp sockets still in this, so you could run things like a diesel heater off directly. Don't think the D40 can be used as a power supply to directly run 12 volt. It seems like it might need a 12 volt battery and not just be run directly off this. Although I can't find anything in the manual which says either way. And that manual's not finished yet, so there may be some new components. So everything I say could change a bit. Overall, it's a pretty versatile bit of equipment. Traditional electrical systems tend to be cheaper versus the capacity and performance, but you lose out on space and portability. Power stations can be more versatile as when you're not using it in the vehicle, you can simply remove it and use it elsewhere. I'm not gonna replace my traditional electrical system with it, but I've already said in the past, I use smaller power stations to help complement my electrics. It's useful having something I can take away from the van. Other users who maybe aren't have a van life use or a motorhome use, or who do but have a very simple electrical system, it could suddenly get a lot more sophisticated with something like a power station. And the ability to have some integration may also be useful for others as well. In conclusion, just as you would expect from most power stations, the specs it does as it says on the website. It's a Bluetti one, which is a well-known brand and they make good kit. I know power station videos aren't everyone's favorite, but this is how I fund my channel and all the free content I make. So if you are interested in learning about the Bluetti AC200L, please do check out some of the links in the description. And if you're here still, consider subscribing and checking out some of the other bits of the channel, a lot of the adventures and where I actually use power stations in reality. So thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Cheers, bye.